<clears throat> how we doing? How we doing? Good, how are you? Good, good. about this offense ability to capitalize like last game first drive interception you come back you score and the next possession the interception and you and you score again what is it about this offense ability to take advantage of the rebound and come back on the big plays? yeah i think it starts with um you know, with playing complementary football, um, obviously you don't want to turn the ball over early in games. You don't want to turn the ball over at all. Uh, but our defense did a great job going out there, and uh, they got a stop. You know, on fourth down, gave us the ball back, and then back-to-back uh, -back turnovers. Um, so really three turnovers in a row to start the game. You know, uh, I think that set us up for success. And uh, a big part of an offense is rewarding your defense when they do those things. You know, when they go out and they're playing like that. Um, you got to reward those guys and you got to score points, give them the confidence they need to continue to play like that and continue to play hard and have that edge and have that swagger. And so I think we did you know, a tremendous job of that uh, last week and we just got to continue that. Would you call yourself a big play offense? Uh, so far, so far. We made a lot of big plays and um, we like to be an explosive offense, yes, but we also want to be an efficient offense and we want to do well in the situations as well, the third downs and the red zone. And so uh, it's all collective, man. We just got to put it all together and we got explosive players all over the place. Guys are making plays. Uh, the offensive line is giving us time to hit those plays and opening up holes in the run game. And so we can be a big play offense if we continue what we're doing. Chargers last week, Giants now. What do these games mean for you personally? Uh, just another game, uh, you know, opportunity to go out there with my teammates, my brothers, uh, to fight, to compete. You know, um, obviously I was with those franchises and they did well by me. I, you know, I don't have any uh, remorse or anything. Uh, just looking forward to going out there and competing again. What did you take away from uh, the Giants? Uh, you know, it was short-lived. I was only there for really a year, so it wasn't really much time. But, um, you know, what, what I can say is, uh, you know, I enjoyed my time there. I uh, had an opportunity to learn and grow. Uh, was, was able to be under uh, Coach McAdoo and Mr. Jerry Reese, who, um, you know, I owe a lot to. And then, um, obviously, being able to be with, uh, in the same room with Eli Manning uh, and learning from him and, and learning with him and competing with him uh, was, was awesome, you know, just to be a part of that for a year. What do you remember about the, the start you made for the Giants in 2018 and all the circumstances around that? Uh, it was, was against uh, Oakland. It was against the Raiders. Uh, familiar face, Bruce Irvin was on the opposite side. Uh, Khalil Mack was also out there as, as well. And, um, you know, it was just a chance for me to go out there and show what I got. You know, it was one, one game. Uh, obviously, uh, there was a lot um, of, you know, speculation and stuff surrounding that game. But for me, it was just, you know, like I've always been, you know, just focused on the game. I didn't really get caught up in any, anything else. What was your relationship like with Eli Manning? That was an odd time in his career, obviously. He was nearing the end of it. Yeah, uh, Eli was great. Eli was great. I had met Eli um, actually prior to that. We were training together in California, and uh, we were throwing this stuff together. And so we had a relationship already. I had I met him. I went down to the Manning camp when I was in college, and so uh, developed a relationship with Peyton, Eli, Archie, Cooper, all those guys. And you know, it was it was good. You know, it was a good time for me when I was there. What's up? What's Marquise had in these last few weeks? Have you got him a lot more involved in things? Uh, you know, Marquise, um, he gives us that explosive threat down the field. Um, he's also, you know, got a, got a lot of ability to run, you know, different routes, and uh, you know, he can be a, a gadget guy. He can do a bunch of things. Um, he's he's tremendously, uh, you know, just well-rounded uh, in his game and the, the things he can do. And so he's given us an added element of speed. Uh, he also gives us uh, just another weapon in the pass game, as well as another threat, another deep threat. You know, the defenses they've got to account for him as well uh, with with the other guys we got as well. How much of his impact on Sunday was out of necessity and not having DK there versus Marquise just being more comfortable in the system and with you? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, some of it was necessity. And, you know, early on, you know, DK was there. He caught that touchdown and uh, did a great job. And, um, you know, he's he's our, you know, third guy. And then we have D coming in as well as a third guy. And um, they give us, you know, Great mismatches. You know, you, you, you put linebacker safeties on those guys, they can win. You put your third corner on them, they can win. You single them out one-on-one, -on -one, they can win. And then um, when DK went down, Marquise stepped up and no one blinked. You know, no one blinked an eye. And, and uh, Marquise stepped up and made uh, a few more great plays for us. And he just brings that to the table as well as the other guys. You know, they all have an opportunity to step up now. And so uh, I look forward to it. There was a video that showed Marquise saying that you changed the one touchdown kind of at the line. Marquise was maybe going to run a, 
run an in route, I guess, and you told him to just just go. Are you looking for those kind of situations with Marquise when he's got that? To... Yeah, um, you know, with all the guys, and those are si situations we practice every single day. Um, we talk about those things in the meeting rooms, and when those situations come up in the game, uh, they understand exactly what we're trying to get done, and, and that was an example of that. How often has that worked for a touchdown this year? You change on the fly. Uh, I mean, we do. You know, we do what we got to do. To, to make the place work. And, uh, you know, it's uh, obviously it's a, uh, you know, a thing with me and Shane and, and, and Austin and all the guys where we're just trying to get into the best play possible and um, just be an, an efficient offense and move the ball. Is that a verbal or is that nonverbal? What's that? Like that? Uh, it can be verbal, it can be nonverbal. It, it kind of just depends on the situation and which play we're changing. The Giants don't have a lot of size at the cornerback position. If DK isn't able to go, obviously we don't know that at this point. But where's your confidence level at with Dariq Young stepping in? Yeah. Uh, I'm very confident in Dariq. Uh, we've got a ton of reps together already. Um, we were playing a lot in the preseason together. And so, um, you know, he and I have spent a bunch of time just talking over things and uh, trying to help him get up to speed because I really believe in his ability. And so uh, he's another guy who we, he gets a chance to step up and, uh, you know, I think he's going to do well. Um, he's been working his butt off. He has a lot of ability. Uh, he's very smart. And so we just got to continue to bring him along as everyone else, and uh, he'll make his plays when they come. What do you think you've gotten best at or grown most since game one? Uh, I think just overall um, being more comfortable, you know, in the system and just growing every single week, just trying to get better. Uh, every single thing, every part of my game, I've been uh, hard on myself on, and I've got to continue to get better. Um, you know, I think I have to do a much better job in the red zone um, and, and continue to, you know, just hone in on my footwork, my reads, and, and my accuracy and precision, and just getting the ball out on time, protecting our line, and making sure that we're moving the chains. And so overall, I've been feeling good, but I've got to continue to get better. What about the red zone do you specifically need to be better at? It's just scoring touchdowns, you know, finding ways to score touchdowns in the red zone. However, we can get it done, just getting it done. Did you did you take much blame for the interception last week, or just kind of one of those plays, or? Uh, yeah, I mean, anytime I throw an interception, it you know it makes me upset. Um, don't want to have any of those um, you know mistakes out there. And uh, you know, it was the right read, right throw. It's just one of those plays, man. Like, I feel like all you know, all I've thrown four interceptions here in the Seahawks, and they've all been kind of plays like that. So. Uh, just trying to eliminate those plays and not let the defense, uh, you know, get a turnover. Do you work much with Tater? Uh, yeah, we work with Tater. Um, Tater is uh, obviously he's uh, been here for a while and been a tremendous coach, but um, he does a great job. He's in the room with us every day. Um, he takes us through all the two-minute situations, um, all the scenarios that we'll see in the games in two minutes, T4, T2. And, uh, I mean, he's got a lot of wisdom. He's been around this game for a long time, and he knows his stuff. What were your earlier impressions uh, when you first met him? Uh, at first, when, you know, I was, it was funny, I was actually on the Giants and I saw Tater, we were playing uh, Seahawks and Tater was out there with Russ. And I was just like, who, you know, who's this old guy with the white hair? You know, I didn't know, you know, his position, assumed he was the QB coach, but he always kind of intrigued me. And then when I met him, uh, just getting to know him, man, you just see how down to earth he is and how much knowledge he has and experience and stuff like that. And so he's been great for me, um, just giving me wisdom and helping me out throughout the weeks as well as everyone else. The emphasis that he brings on, on two-minute stuff, or just really the whole staff here, is, this, is that different of that emphasis versus where, the, where other teams you've been on? Uh, I would say it's different. I would. It's unique. Um, and, you know, they're really on it, man. Like, he's, he's, he goes all the way back to some of the situations they had in previous years and just, you know, gives me looks that, you know, you might not have seen on tape. And so, you know, just him helping me prepare and all the guys helping us prepare for you know, all the situations we'll see in the game, they really help out. Austin Blythe, how intelligent is he? Every time I talk to the offensive lineman, it comes out not only as leadership, but just how smart he is. And I don't imagine that, but what, yeah. what do you say about that? He's extremely smart um, and extremely tough. He's a really good player. Uh, it makes my job extremely easy when I don't have to make every single, you know, protection check or every single run check. He's out there already, you know, seeing it and doing it before I even get it, you know, get the words out of my mouth. And so when that happens, uh, it makes our operation that much faster, that much smoother. Uh, we're, we haven't been behind the, uh, the the clock much. You know, we're getting up there on third downs and um, getting our cadence off and being able to make changes and adjustments. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with him. You know, he knows the entire playbook. He can uh, make any call, any check. And when you have that, uh, it makes everything else smooth. When you look back to last Sunday, speaking to Austin, after his false start penalty, you were pretty riled up about it and the whole circumstance afterwards with hitting the third down to Tyler after 
the emotion in that moment? <laughs> how did you kind of manage that, and where did it come from, and, and to pull off the third down there, completion to Tyler Howe? Big boost did that obviously make you feel? Yeah, I mean that was a big drive. That was a big drive for us, and um, you know it was our first drive of the really the second half. And um, you know thinking back to that moment, you know we had been doing that same, same uh, little head bob thing the entire game, really the entire year, hadn't had any problems, and so that kind of frustrated us. Uh, but we got to do a better job at not letting things like that get us, you know, riled up and stuff like that because there's still a game to be played. I thought Coach Carroll did a great job at just bringing us back to square one and just getting us calmed down. And hey, we got to go out there and still convert this third down. And then to pick it up, you know, obviously we're fired up because we get to extend the drive and it's a big drive and, you know, it's a game that we want to win. And so overall, I thought it was a pretty cool moment. I thought it was a cool moment for us as an offense and as a team just to see, you know, the emotion, but also the calmness to get the job done. Is that as hard as you put on the ball this year? <laughs> just ripping it in there inside? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. Sideline cameras caught Coach Carroll giving you kind of a zen centering. Yeah. But it made it nationally a big deal. But is that, that's almost just another day that ends in Y with Carroll, right? That's yeah, yeah. He, he does that to me often. You know, it, he does it to me after big plays. You know, if we go out there and score on the first drive, he'll come up to me and be like, hey, you know, it's, it's just this way of letting me know, hey, just stay even killed. You know, don't get caught up in the emotions and, you know, just stay down and, and stay ready for the next play. So okay. according according to Quandre, you were quite the trash talker back at back at West Virginia. Yeah, he, he says that a lot. I'm not sure about that. He 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 always brings that up. I think he's just salty or bitter that we we beat him that day. But uh, yeah, he says that a lot though. I'm not sure about that. Did, did you actually flash horns down? I did. I, I yeah. I can I can say I did that. You know, we were. It was a big game, you know, our first game and uh, against Texas, and you know, it was a fun it was a fun game, man. Quandre's been a great player, and uh, he still is. So, I guess, has, how has your evolution been when it comes to whether it's maturity or, or less talking trash or whatever been from those days to where you are now? Uh, I'm still fired up. Uh, I still play with the same passion, same emotion. Um, I might talk trash here and there, but I don't, you know, it never gets into anything crazy or anything like that. But I'm always, you know, playing with passion and focus, and uh, that's just a part of my natural demeanor. But uh, I try not to make it trash talk. You know, if it's talk, it's just, you know, for all fun and games. When the temperature in the huddle goes up, is there any one person that kind of brings it down? Or yeah, that's my job. You know, it's my job to make sure that everyone's calm. And, uh, you know, we've had multiple situations this year where uh, it's got a little heated, but we've been able, doing a great job at getting back to square one and staying focused on the next play. How, how has that skill set for you evolved if it's evolved? Uh, it's continually evolving. It's going to continue to evolve. The more reps you get, the more opportunities, the more experiences, uh, you'll gain more, more, um, you know, ex experience with those things. But for me, you know, it's just about just focusing on the next play and staying locked in. Who's the best trash talker on this team? Quandre Diggs, <laughs> by far, best trash talker on the team. You didn't hesitate at all about no, that. No, yeah. You guys have a lot of new pieces on your offensive line. Some guys have been in and out of the lineup, and yet mm -hmm. it still seems like they're playing at a high level. But what have you thought of that group? Uh, you know, I think it starts with, with their coach, with Andy Dickerson. Uh, he does a great job at, you know, just keeping those guys prepared. Um, you know, they grow through a lot of walkthroughs, and um, he, he is just on it every step of the way. Uh, I was literally thinking that today going to walkthroughs, and they were walking through some things, and I was like, man, these guys are really dialed in. And you can see it, all those guys, man, they know what they have to do. Uh, like I said, Austin does a great job of communicating, and they all communicate down the line. And then you see it, you know, they're connected when, when, the, when the play starts. Uh, are you usually in between series? Are you usually talking to your guys, or do you get much of a chance to watch the defense? Uh, yeah, I try to. I'm always sitting on the bench and just like looking at the tablet, you know, talking to Shane and um, you know Sean Mannion and uh, Drew and, and Dave. They all do a great job at just giving me, feeding me information. And then I'm like looking up at the, uh, you know, if there's a scoreboard or something like that, I'm looking up at it just to see the plays that are made. But I'm usually listening to the crowd to see, okay, what happens, and then. For the most part, man, those guys have been balling out, man. Like, you, you can see it, how they've just took a turn, and they're getting more and more confidence, and guys are making more and more plays. And uh, I think that's going to continue. What's it been like to watch them live at those moments down the last few weeks, considering where they were earlier in the year? Yeah, man, it's so fun. You know, it's so fun just to see the growth, you know, see them growing. I mean, we expected them. It's a new system. You know, they got to learn some things and figure out what, you know, what works and what doesn't. And just seeing the growth and the confidence they're playing with, uh, it's tremendous because that's going to continue. They're a young bunch, you know, they're really young and, uh, you know, they're developing leadership and all that type of stuff. And so they're going to continue to get better. And I just, uh, you know, I'm excited to see where it goes. 
you said after the game on, on Ken's long run, you know, all you had to do, the best thing you did was just pitch the ball to them and all that. When, when a play breaks like that from your vantage point, how quickly can you tell, like, yeah, maybe this is going to happen here? Like, you know, I'm learning with Ken, man. Like, if he gets up to the safety, you know, it might be goodbye. I mean, he's he's that fast. He's that explosive. Um, and that play, if you watch the play, was he he went untouched. You know, it was blocked tremendously. The line did a great job. Will Disley, Kobe Parkinson did a great job. D. Eskis went and, and fit up on the safety, and that got him, you know, pretty much to that open field. And then once he gets there, he's got the speed to take it all away. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you, guys.